Okay, welcome back. So here we have one more video for our writing about scientific results section for this particular module. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about how to decide when you're putting together a result section and you have data that you want to communicate to the readers, how to decide whether you should put that data in the form of a table or the form of a graph. You may have noticed in um, if you've read any scientific papers, um, that oftentimes both of these types of figures are contained in a result section. So I'll talk a little bit about how to decide whether you want to do a table or whether you want to do a graph. And just so we're on the same page, here are two different examples taken from the same paper. And again, we're going to go back to our handy dandy fish egg example. If you're thinking, oh my gosh, why is she talking about fish eggs again? I'm actually doing this on purpose because they've done research to show that if you use the same context for examples, it helps to minimize what's called your cognitive load. All that means is you can understand quicker what the context for the example is and focus on the new information, which in this case is differentiating between tables and graphs. So I'm not trying to be a bro broken record. Um, I am doing this somewhat on purpose. So you're more familiar with the examples I'm using. Okay, so here on the left, we have an example of a table. So this is very similar to if you were to input things into Excel, which we have done. And then if you were to extract that, um, you have your different columns, um, you have your different rows. So that's the general format for a table. And then for a graph here on the right, that again is something that we've talked about in class. So this particular example is a bar plot. And so um, graphs are a more visual way of representing your data versus just listing it out in a table. And so when should you use a table? So when is it appropriate to display your information in a table instead of a graph? You should use a table if you are for one, presenting raw data. So it's not anything that you've analyzed per se or process, it's just raw information. It's also beneficial to use a table if you want to show multiple pieces of information for the same data point. I'll show examples of all of this on the next slide to hopefully explain a little bit better. And then you should also use a table if you're wanting to provide descriptive information. So again, this kind of relates back to it being raw data, but this is information that the reader just needs as background, for instance. So maybe where your samples were collected from, like latitude and longitude or that kind of thing. So these are three instances um, when you would want to put your data in a table instead of a graph. So for an example of that, I have a table um, taken from a paper that used the same data we've been working with where we were looking at the different number of fish eggs that were collected across different seasons. And one of the things that we haven't talked about yet, um, but if you're interested, take my 178 molecular ecology class. They also, in that study, looked not only at how many eggs were collected, but actually what different species were contained within there. You can actually use molecular techniques to figure out, just from that little fish egg, what kind of species it is. So here in this table, um, we have four different columns. So this is an example of where for each of these individuals, so these are all scientific names for fish, Scytherichthys stigmaeus, that's this speckled sand dab shown here. Fun fact, um, these are flatfish, which means both of their eyeballs are on the top of their head. When they're baby fish, they have normal eyeballs, one on each side, and then as they get older, both of their eyes rotate to the same side of their body. Not relevant at all for this video, but super cool. Um, so here in that first row, what we want to do for that same species is give multiple pieces of information about it. So we want to say what the common name is. We want to say how many eggs were collected and in how many different collections. So that's an example of when we would use a table because we have multiple pieces of information for that same data point. Another thing we talked about was if you're using descriptive data or raw data. Here, all the information that's listed here, so the common name, that's just descriptive. We didn't have to do any analysis to figure out what the common name of that species was. That's just something that's by convention 
um, what has been decided. And then the number of eggs collected and the number of collections, those are both just raw data points. So just literally how many eggs that we collect, how many different collections were performed that we found that species in. So no additional analysis was needed. These are just raw data, raw counts. Um, these other pictures here are just for your reference. Um, the top three most common species found in this data set were that flatfish that I already talked about, um, the senorita, which is this one in the middle, and then the specific sardine. So if you've ever been to like the Monterey Bay Aquarium or any type of aquarium, a lot of them have these big displays in the very front where it's this kind of round thing and they have a bunch of sardines swimming around, so you may have seen those before. But this is a good example of when to use a table because we're using um, raw descriptive data and we want to give multiple pieces of information for each data point. In contrast, you should use a graph if you're interested in displaying trends in the data. So for instance, if you want to display patterns of relationships between two different variables. So one example of that might be if you want to show a relationship between two continuous variables. And if you have two continuous variables, what specific type of graph should you use? Right, hopefully you remembered that that would be a scatter plot. And if you want to show a relationship where you have one categorical and one continuous variable, what kind of graph would be appropriate in that scenario? Right, a bar plot. So you should use a graph mainly when you're interested in displaying trends and relationships. So here's an example um, from that same data set, but now we're looking at a bar plot. Here, just for context, remember that we are collecting fish eggs um, off of the pier here. And so what this particular bar plot is showing is the average eggs collected and they split that across two different categories, whether the water temperature was below 17.9, which was the mean temperature, or 17.8, excuse me, or whether it was above 17.8. And so here we want to use a graph. It's more appropriate to use a graph because we are showing data that has been analyzed in some way. So if the figure caption, which we talked about earlier, it says we're showing the average number of eggs plus or minus the standard deviation. We had to do analyses to calculate this average, right? So that average is not raw data. And in order to calculate that standard deviation, we had to do calculation. So when we're showing something like that, oftentimes we want to show it in a graph instead of a table. Another thing that would indicate we should use a graph in this instance is that we're interested in showing the relationship or the trend between these two different categories of above and below. And here it's very easy to see visually that when the water temperature is below 17.9, we see a much lower average number of eggs compared to when we have the water temperature above that mean. And in fact, if we look here in the figure caption, they've done a t-test to in to determine that these averages are significantly different from each other. So that's an example of when you would want to use a graph if you want to show um, analyzed process data and how it relates among two different or more variables. So uh, that's it for this video. So please go ahead and go back to Canvas, um, take a short quiz that will have you apply this knowledge um, and answer some questions about when you should use a table versus a graph.